welcome back to my channel. So for today, I have a long-awaited review of my beautiful Van Cleef & Rappel's Vintage Alhambra Gliache Bracelet. I've had this for well over a year now, so I think it's due time for me to tell you guys all of my thoughts about this beautiful little piece. So if you want to check out everything I have to say so far about my Gliache bracelet, definitely keep watching. If you are new here, thanks so much for checking this out. I'm a full-time working mom, but in my spare time, I love making these videos on fashion, beauty, mommy lifestyle, a little bit of luxury, and reselling as well. So if those kind of things sound at all interesting, definitely check out my other videos linked down below. And please consider also hitting that subscribe button as well. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so, so much for watching another video. So if you want to check out my initial unboxing video that I put together when I unboxed this bracelet for the first time well over a year ago, I will link it in the description box down below. In that video, I go through my thought process as to why I wanted to add this piece to my collection, how I actually was able to purchase this item, how I was able to size it, all those kinds of things. If you're interested in hearing about, definitely check out that video. I also recommend that you check out that video because you will see how this bracelet looks pristine, out of the box, from the store, and you can compare it to how it looks like now, which is obviously a little bit different. So I think the comparison is kind of helpful. Nonetheless, I think it's due time for me to put together this review video because a lot of people ask about this bracelet. I know before I purchased it, I watched basically almost every YouTube video out there about this bracelet so I can see wear and tear, what people thought about it, pros and cons, before I decided to make this purchase. Because admittedly, it is definitely a considered purchase. There's no doubt about that. So whenever I make these luxury purchases, I want to do as much research as I can and just really get a sense of if I think that item will work for me. So I hope this video is helpful if you're in that same position as well. Enough chit chat. Let's get on into this video. I will start by just showing you how it comes. So I did purchase this in the store and at the boutique, they actually had it in stock, believe it or not. And this was well over a year ago. So I was thrilled about that. I knew exactly what I wanted when I went in there. I knew I wanted this particular version. I was so lucky that they had it available. So it does come in this beautiful bag. So here is the beautiful box it comes in, and I believe the packaging currently has changed a little bit, but this is how it came when I purchased this item. And it does flip down on the front, and it has this beautiful, iconic, beautiful green color that's a suede type of material. And this is how the presentation is. And it did come along with the extra spare links that I did take out when I actually had this sized through the boutique. So I will talk a little bit more about sizing later on in this video, but the links actually do come along with your bracelets in case I assume you want to use them later. Also coming along here is this beautiful travel pouch, which I honestly haven't used at all, but it is a very nice cushiony suede material pouch and it has a little insert so you can put your bracelet in here in case you want to travel with it. I think this is super nice to have. You should definitely ask for it if you're purchasing from the boutique. But, you know, I actually don't use it that often, I will say, but it's a beautiful little addition. So it does also come with the care booklet and the certificate of authenticity, of course. So here's the care booklet. It's a beautiful little folder. It folds out like this and it talks to you about their services and here is the full certificate of authenticity in this little folder here so really really beautiful presentation as of course you would come to expect from this brand so before i share with you guys some up close wear and tear shots how i like to wear it and answer a lot of your questions I do want to tell you a little bit more about this particular design. So here is the beautiful bracelet I'm going to be reviewing today. And again, this is the vintage Alhambra size, 18 karat yellow gold in the Gliache version. And Gliache refers to the beautiful faceting that you will see on each of these clover leaves. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is the full gold design. So they do make this bracelet in so many different styles. They do make it in a diamond version. They also have recently released it in an 18 karat white gold version, which is absolutely gorgeous as well. They do have a hammered clover leaf style. So as I'm sure you're all very well aware, they do make this design in many different beautiful stone designs. 
So for instance, they make it in carnelian, onyx, chalcedony, tiger's eye, mother of pearl, and different shades of agate. In addition to, I'm sure, many other styles and limited edition versions as well. So, so many different varieties to pick from, but I decided to go, at least for my first bracelet, with the full 18 karat gold design. So this Alhambra design is really, I would say, iconic for the brand. It's what at least I know this brand for, although they make many other different lines of jewelry. I know this Alhambra style, no doubt, is from VCA. So this Alhambra design is modeled after a clover leaf. So the idea is it hopefully will bring good luck to the wearer as well. And they have multiple different sizes of the Alhambra design. So again, this is the vintage style, which is essentially kind of the medium size. They do make a sweet Alhambra version, which is smaller. And pair the website, if you measure the distance from the tip of the leaf to the opposite tip, or essentially maybe the diameter, you could say, it measures 9.5 millimeters in the sweet Alhambra design. The vintage Alhambra, which is this version, measures from tip of the clover leaf to the other tip of 15 millimeters, so a pretty decent size increase compared to the smaller version. They also do make a pure Alhambra size, which from tip to tip measures 16 millimeters, so not a huge difference from the vintage. And then the largest Alhambra size is called the Magic, and that measures 26 millimeters, so that obviously is a pretty decent size increase compared to this vintage size. So in terms of sizing, according to the website, this bracelet size is 7.48 inches. But as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you are able to have this size through the boutique. I believe they have to ship it away in most cases. So for me, at least, to have this size, the turnaround time was about three weeks or so for me to get it shipped back to me. But they are able to size it for you. In case you're curious, my wrist size, if you measure the full circumference of my wrist, it measures about six inches. For another size reference you might be interested in, if you own or have looked at these love bracelets, I do wear a size 16 centimeters in these love bracelets. So with this particular vintage Alhambra bracelet, I did actually have several links removed. So in total, I had removed 12 links from this Alhambra original size bracelet. So with removing 12 links, for me at least, it fits perfectly where I want it to sit with a little bit of leeway, but not too much. So this is how I liked it. I think a lot of people admittedly would think that this is a little too tight for their liking and would probably have not removed quite as many links. But for me at least, this was the perfect size. So again, I removed a total of 12 links from this bracelet and for me that fit perfectly so i'm gonna go ahead and take off this bracelet so i can share with you guys super up close videos shots to show you what the wear and tear looks like before i take it off though i will share with you how i like to wear it so as you can see i do like to stack it with my cartier pieces and i love it in this particular setting here in the sense of having this closest to my hand when I first unboxed this bracelet, you will notice if you've seen that video that I initially thought I would wear it here on the end closest to my elbow. When I did that, I thought the stack looked strange because it seemed like this was kind of a sandwich look, meaning that these two love bracelets, because they're exactly the same look, in the middle of a Just Done Clue sandwiched with the uh, VCA piece, looked like these were the little pieces of meat in the sandwich, so it looked too strange uh, for me at least. I liked a little bit of a more asymmetric look. So that's why I decided to move this bracelet closer to my wrist. And I just really like how this stack looks now. I think it's really easy to wear, it's comfortable. I will talk a lot more about this toward the end of this video, but this is how I currently like to stack it. I don't take this bracelet off at all. I wear it 24 seven and Therefore, I am probably going to have a hard time putting it back on, but I'm going to take it off right now to share with you guys how this looks up close. So here are some beautiful up close shots of this gorgeous bracelet. And as you can see, in my opinion, it's still pretty sparkly. Again, this is the five motif style of bracelet. You can see the five motifs there. It is nowhere near as sparkly as when I first unboxed it, if you want to check out that first video. Because yes, this bracelet does scratch, as you can see. I intentionally did not clean this at all before this video. In fact, uh, I'm embarrassed to say, but I actually have not cleaned this officially at all since I 
purchased this well over a year ago and I wear it every single day. So hey, this is real life. I wanted to share with you guys what this bracelet looks like without cleaning it. So hopefully it can give you a better idea of how it wears. So as you can see, there's definitely wear and tear on the glioche faceting, both from scratches and also dirt and things that collect in the little facets. If you are curious, this is faceted on both sides. So as you can see on the motif here, it's faceted on both sides, which is a great, great detail. And as you can see, it has a beautiful beaded edges. So the craftsmanship of this particular piece is just amazing. So just totally gorgeous. And it's really all around. So when the motifs flip, it's nice because they're faceted on both sides that you really can't tell if they've flipped. It does have the standard clasp, as you can see here on one end. And here is the clasp on this end. Again, has held up super well. I have no concerns about this falling off. I think it very securely sits on my wrist. So in terms of sizing, again, I had a total of 12 links removed and they decide where they remove them from. And at least according to what they did to my bracelet, they remove the links primarily from the sections of the motifs closest to the clasp. So as you will see, the distance between the center motifs here, I believe is the original distance that this bracelet came with. Where they remove the links are between the motifs closest to the clasp, as you can see here. So here, I believe they removed two links, and then they removed four links from the end motif to the clasp. So in some ways, it's a little bit asymmetric in the sense that the distance between all the motifs are not the same because the ones in the middle have more chain length between them. This doesn't bother me too much. Honestly, I would have probably preferred if the motifs were closer together in the middle because this is the section that shows up on the front of your wrist. So you can see more of the motifs. But I totally understand why they do it this way. It's probably a lot easier to go ahead and remove it closer to the clasp. So I totally get it. It's not a big deal. But just in case you're curious how they do remove the links, they remove them closer to the clasp. So I will give you some more up close wear and tear shots. As you can see, in my opinion, I think they hold up very well, but I mean, you can definitely see the scratches there. So once again, since I purchased this well over a year ago, I have worn this no joke 24 seven. This is the first time I honestly have taken it off since I purchased this and as you can see, in my opinion, I think it holds up really well. I have not cleaned this, honestly, since I purchased it. And I just really love how it wears. Um, I really enjoy wearing it 24-7. I wanted a piece, just like my Cartier pieces here, where I didn't have to remove them. I have my eye on a lot of the stone versions of this vintage Alhambra bracelet. However, I am nervous about having to take them off so often. If you own some of those stone versions, please let me know if you wear them 24 seven. I know some people do, although it's probably not recommended, but I am curious because I have four kids, a full-time job like a lot of you guys, and I just don't like to worry about taking off my jewelry anymore, that I just sleep in this, I shower in this, I do wear it in the pool and in the ocean when we travel. This has been everywhere with me. So I just love that about this Glio Shave version. I honestly also think that VCA does not recommend wearing this Glioche version everywhere because if you wear it 24-7, it's going to scratch. I think a more hard-wearing version would be the hammered all-gold version in case you're curious about that. But I just love the look of this and I just accepted that it will get scratched. Um, so nonetheless, I do wear this 24-7. So I just love the look of how it is with the stack. I think it adds a lot of texture and dimension to the more harsh, clean lines of the Cartier bracelets. So this was perfect for me. I thought about adding, instead of this, a softer line bracelet, either from Cartier or VCA. And I got some feedback from some of the sales associates that that just probably won't work. You need to pick a hefty enough piece that can stand up to the Cartier pieces. So I think this bracelet totally fits the bell. It's hardy enough to stand up to them on its own, but also it's a little bit of a softer line, so it adds a lot of texture and dimension to the stack. 
Another question that people often ask is, do you have to take any of these bracelets off when you go through the TSA checkpoints in the airport or if you're going into venues where, for instance, there are metal detectors? So my answer is thankfully no. <laughs> I think enough people have these kind of bracelets that are hard to remove that they're not surprised at seeing these things. And nowadays, when you go through TSA, you often can just do the body scanner uh, option where they don't have you go through a full metal detector. In addition, when I've gone to different sporting events and concerts and amusement parks where you have to go through a metal detector, all they ask me to do is raise my arms or wrists above my head and then I can walk through. Then they can easily tell where the metal is on your body and it's honestly not a big deal. I've never been asked to remove any of these items when going through either TSA or a metal detector. So don't worry about that. At least in my experience after wearing these bracelets for many, many years now, not a huge problem. I wouldn't let that deter you from purchasing these items if you have your eyes on them. So again, a lot of these comments are being generated by questions that I've received from you all and my friends and family about this bracelet. So I hope these are helpful to you. I will say that overall, I love this bracelet, one of my most favorite pieces in my collection. But there are a few cons that I, of course, will touch on as well. So one of the cons, as you can tell, is it's pretty hard to put this bracelet on yourself because I did settings such that it's pretty tight. Again, I removed 12 links. So I am gonna have a hard time putting it back on. I need to get my husband to help me. <laughs> so I will do that at the end of this video. But as you can see, that's definitely a con in case you want ease of wear and you do wanna take it off now and again. It is a little challenging. I have done it myself, as you will have seen in my original unboxing video, but it did take quite a bit of time to get that done. So that's a little con. That's in contrast, for instance, to the Just Unclue, which is pretty easy for me to take off. The other con is it does scratch. There's no doubt about that. You've seen it in the wear and tear portion of this video, and I've talked about it already before. The glioche sections are definitely not as vibrant as they were over a year ago when I got this, and there are very visible scratches. For me, again, I don't mind. I realize that any 18 karat gold piece, like all of the ones that I wear on a day-to-day -day basis, scratch. I have scratches on all of them. I realize they're gonna scratch, so I'm okay with it. But if scratches bother you, this one may not be the best piece for you. Again, if that's the case, I would recommend getting the hammered gold version of the Alhambra bracelets. I think that may be one that shows a little bit less wear and tear with time. But I love the look of this. I'm okay with the scratches, but that's definitely a con in many people's books. Another con I will say is if you do stack it with different bracelets like I do, this bracelet does sometimes get a little tangled with my other pieces. So for instance, what will happen is the Just Don't Clue will overlap it like I'm showing here now. And sometimes I will feel a little bit of tugging because it gets a little bit caught in the other bracelets. For me, honestly, it doesn't happen all that much, so I'm okay with it. But it does happen sometimes, in which case I have to go and kind of maneuver it a little bit. It's a pretty easy fix, but sometimes it does actually get caught under the other bracelets in your stack. However, in general, I have not had this bracelet catch on anything else. For instance, I do a lot of housework, cleaning, laundry, cooking, all that stuff for the family, and this doesn't really get caught on anything, which I was a little surprised about and happy about. So although sometimes it does overlap or get a little bit tangled with my other bracelets, it doesn't really get tangled with other things uh, that I encounter on a day-to-day -day type of a basis. So overall, I think it's really, really manageable. All right, guys, so there is my little review of my beautiful five motif vintage Alhambra Glioche 18 karat yellow gold bracelet from Van Cleef and our pals. I absolutely love this piece. Again, it is really one of my most favorite pieces ever. I would absolutely repurchase this if I had to start over. So I hope this little review was very helpful for you in case you have your eye on this beautiful little piece. Um, it's such a unique, high-quality item that I definitely think it's worth the splurge. If you have this, comment down below. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know also if you own some of the other versions, too. I'm always looking at expanding my VCA collection, so I definitely would love to hear feedback from you. As you all probably know, I do also own a companion piece that I'm wearing around my neck as well. I will save that review for another video so this one isn't too lengthy, but stay tuned for an upcoming video about this beautiful pendant as well in case you have your eye on that one. 
Thanks again for watching this video. I hope you're staying safe and healthy, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.